oh man, this is very big. And of course, no one in the mainstream media is even acknowledging what Putin just did this week. While the entire world, of course, is focused on Israel and the United States quickly moving towards a war in that region, Russian President Vladimir Putin over the past few days has drawn a massive red line that will forever change the unipolar order that the United States, of course, has enjoyed since World War II. In fact, Putin's moves over the past few days are bigger than anything he's done since the start of the war in Ukraine. I'm going to get to these major pieces of news in a moment, but first, the United States is actively prepping for war in the Middle East, while at the same time giving a big middle finger to Ukrainian President Zelensky, who is increasingly looking unhinged in interviews. I am again repeating, and I'm repeating in these two years, if it will be not enough for them, it will not be enough, because Syria was not enough. They began in Ukraine. After Ukraine in the Middle East, they will continue their plan. What the hell does that even mean? I'm sorry, I don't use cocaine, so someone is going to have to translate it for me. The U.S. Pentagon just admitted that the funding for Ukraine is almost gone, drying up. Oh man. In other words, it's taking funding away from Ukraine and instead sending it to Israel. Oh shit. How does it feel to be kicked to the curb like a Kardashian? There's issues that I have. Gone are the billion dollar payments to Ukraine. In fact, the Pentagon was just about to send 400 million, but instead whittled it down to 125 million and said it's now drying up. And news reports over the past week show that Western leaders are getting sick of Zelensky. So all of those Ukrainian politicians that got so rich off of American taxpayers and bought million dollar homes in Spain, Italy and Switzerland, Portugal and Monaco will have their money cut off soon. Or the Ukrainian politician who just threw his 16 year old daughter a sweet 16 party and then literally threw money at her before driving off in a nice Mercedes. Wonder where all that money came from that you can just throw it up into the air. So now would be a good time to talk about peace, wouldn't you think? The United States this week then shocked the world and basically admitted that there's no way that Ukraine wins this war. It's over and it's pushing Ukraine towards peace talks. But Zelensky is not interested in peace talks. He wants every Ukrainian man to die, of course. He asked this week to change the military recruiting standards once again, and he officially canceled the Ukrainian elections. Yes. So desperate people do desperate things. Meanwhile, Putin, really stunning moves that caught the West totally off guard and really show that the United States led global world order is fracturing before our eyes. So first, Putin signed a new law that removes Russia from the nuclear test ban treaty. This is basically a threat of nuclear use without having to actually threaten nuclear use. Putin's approval of the de-ratification law was posted then on a government website, which said the decision took immediate effect. Yeah, didn't the Western media last week say that Putin was dead? Russia's President Vladimir Putin has suffered a suspected cardiac arrest. The Russian leader was found by guards on the floor of the bedroom rolling his eyes. Okay, Russia's parliament has already approved this step. So this means Russia could literally test nuclear weapons, something it hasn't done since 1990. And just a few days before this, as if to sort of underline the point, Russia saying, hey, we are a nuclear power that just destroyed NATO forces in Ukraine. Every country threw all of their weapons at us and they are sitting there on fire right now. They even rolled out a brand new military recruiting ad this week showing soldiers peeing on NATO vehicles. And then in China, meeting with Xi Jinping, Putin was flanked by soldiers carrying the nuclear code's briefcases, a show of solidarity with China for their Belt and Road Initiative, a massive expansion of trade throughout the Middle East and Asia. And then second, Russia gives a big middle finger to the United Nations, which is a United States run organization, a proxy for the Biden administration. Russia defied the UN last week when it said it was basically going to start helping Iran build missiles. Oh, wow. The United States loves that. The U.S. wants to go to war with Iran, and the U.S. Congress just gave Biden the power to go to war with Iran. are uh, introducing a bipartisan sense of the Senate resolution tomorrow about Iran. Senator Graham, what will it say? Well, it basically says if the war expands, if Hezbollah opens up a second front in the north against Israel in a substantial way to overwhelm Iron Dome, 
uh, then we should hit the Islamic Republic of Iran. All of this is adding up. So Russia said, quote, supplies to and from Iran, products falling under the missile technology control regime, no longer requ require prior approval by the United Nations Security Council. That's what the Russian foreign ministry said in a statement on Tuesday. So this is basically a Pentagon wet dream. Russia going to help Iran build missiles? What more excuse do you need to start a war in the Middle East? And then Israeli soldiers planting Israeli flags in Gaza, saying we are taking back this land for Israel, land that is rightfully ours. Iran said, not so fast. This means we are heading to a broader war. Great. So war in the Middle East is coming. But that wasn't even the biggest story of the week. No, it's even bigger than all of that, bigger than the nuclear brinksmanship. Russia struck a deal with Dubai to essentially control the Arctic shipping routes. Now, you'll recall a few months ago, I did a deep dive here on the show, how vitally important the new Arctic shipping lanes are, a massive Middle East and Russian alliance. The U.S. has utterly failed to do anything in the Arctic Circle. This is a new trade route, which will control trade between the East and the West and the North and the South. And it won't rely on the Suez or Panama canals. It won't have to go through the Straits of Hormuz, which can take upwards of a month for deliveries. This trade route takes only days. Russia is in the lead to add this territory to its already massive mineral resource territory. Imagine running this shipping lane, and the United States is way behind. Here's Rex Tillerson to explain how far behind the United States is. What I can tell you is the United States is behind. We're behind all the other Arctic nations. They, are, they have dealt with this. They've gotten way ahead of us. The Russians made it a strategic priority. Even the Chinese are building ice-breaking tankers. Now, why are they building icebreakers? They're not an Arctic nation because they see the value of these passages. So if Russia officially adds the Arctic area to the Russian territory, then they'll have their hand on roughly 16% of the world's untapped oil, 30% of the world's undiscovered gas that lies buried beneath the ocean. In addition to which, a vast mineral deposits there of nickel, platinum, and many other rare earth metals, completely upending the global world order. And we'll come back to nickel in a minute because it's incredibly important. This would be Putin's crown jewel, something no one is talking about, an Arctic supply chain passage. Some smart people like Rex Tillerson understand that, but people are ignoring this and it completely separates Russia from the West, a unipolar delight. Now, if Russia controls the fastest supply chain trade route in the world, everything changes. So that's the news update part of today's video. Now I want you to pay attention to today's sponsor, which is tied directly to Putin's moves around nickel that we just mentioned, and the Arctic Circle this week. This is pretty stunning news, what I'm about to show you. The company is called Alaska Energy Metals. Here's their stock ticker on your screen. And this is the first and only nickel company that I've ever featured here on the show, and for good reason. I have a specific criteria that I look at before investing, and none of them have even come close to this company. This checks all of the boxes. Now, I love nickel as a commodity, and I've never found a US-based nickel company that I like until now. This one checks, again, all of the boxes that I look for. And I'm really excited to bring this to you. This is amazing. So here is their stock ticker on your screen. Take a look at this. Let me explain why I'm so bullish on this company. But first, we need to understand that nickel was a pretty boring commodity, I think you would admit, until Elon Musk made it one of the most important commodities in the world, basically overnight. Besides just being a five cent coin in the United States, nickel was really only used in nickel plating and bathrooms and faucets and things like that. I had nickel doorknobs. And when I renovated a, a house, my first home, I put it in before I sold the house. I put in nickel-plated finishes and stuff. Again, boring, right? No one cares about nickel. Then Elon Musk comes along and starts using lithium-ion batteries in Tesla. And he gives a speech where he says that lithium-ion batteries are poorly named, that they shouldn't even be called lithium batteries at all. They should be called nickel batteries because there is five times more nickel in these batteries than lithium. And nickel is incredibly rare. It's hard to find. There is 29 kilograms of nickel versus only five kilograms of lithium in one of these lithium ion batteries. So, whoops, Elon Musk just let the cat out of the bag. And then investors started scrambling, looking more closely at where do we get our nickel? And holy shit, they realized that the United States imports 100% of our nickel. Yes, you heard me right, 100%. We don't produce anything. There were zero active mines in the US, none. And the Biden administration just put enormous money 
and effort behind moving to an all-electric fleet of vehicles and getting rid of combustion engines in the United States. The reliance on lithium batteries and nickel is tremendous, and yet the United States doesn't produce any? Holy smokes. So my friends, that's where this company comes in. Alaska Energy Metals is the most insane story because right now they have discovered nickel at their location in Alaska at their project, and they are actively drilling. And as you know, I like to bring you these companies before they announce drilling results. Now, just so you understand, the three biggest nickel spots in the world, Indonesia, the Philippines, and why do you think the U.S. has four military bases in the Philippines, by the way? But the biggest and the best spot in the world for nickel is, you guessed it, Russia, Norilsk, Siberia. In fact, it's a massive area. You think Putin is going to sell to America? No, he's not. And they just announced more sanctions against Russia this week around minerals, diamonds, and other precious metals. So do you think there's going to be a chance that Putin is going to be selling any minerals to the United States? No, no, he's not. He's going to be using it for his own manufacturing. It's game over. You see how big this is? The Biden administration is quickly moving the United States to an all-electric fleet of cars. And again, the U.S. imports 100% of its nickel. That is not a sustainable business model. Just as we've covered lithium in the United States with one lithium mine. Again, these minerals are vital to the United States economy and we need to ramp up production. So the reason I'm investing huge into Alaska Energy Metals is because they have already drilled and they found nickel on their project location in Alaska. And get this, the nickel they found has the same quality as the nickel found in Russia. Right, a high quality nickel, better than Indonesia and better than the Philippines. So in other words, the United States now has a similar nickel project to what Putin has. This is a huge deal. Remember, this is a small company with a market cap of only $22 million. They have no debt and they have cash to continue drilling right now. But this might be the best part of the story. So their project sits right here in this purple, right next to this purple area here on your screen. This area in purple is owned by a competitor called Cobalt. The investors in this company are Richard Branson, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Ray Dalio, Michael Bloomberg, just to name a few. There's more big names involved in this project. It's a private company. You can't invest in it unless you have eight figures. And they believe this area right here is the biggest and most strategic place to find nickel deposits in the world. And guess what? Alaska Energy Metals, the small company I'm telling you about, is sitting right there, right next to that land. Meaning that this company would be a major acquisition target and a buyout target for Cobalt. Swoop in and buy it up. So what do you think would happen if Alaska Energy Metals announces fantastic drilling results right in Cobalt's backyard? Yes, they could be bought out. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but if I'm Cobalt and this little guy right next door just discovers all this nickel, that's an acquisition target. Just so you understand, their drill hole discovery is currently classified as a resource. Their next plan is to up this to a deposit site, okay? Meaning all these black spots that you're seeing here on your screen, these are drill holes on the map. All right, we're standing on the Eureka zone of mineralization right now. You can see our drill in the background is drilling a hole at about a 60 degree angle down into the rock. So the zone is about 300 meters thick here and it goes in this direction almost 12 kilometers. So this could be an absolutely giant deposit of nickel mineralization. And in those drill holes, they found nickel all over their site. Now the real drilling begins to find a full vein of nickel. And once they do that, it gets classified as a deposit. It's a very big move and very big upside for this company. Let me be perfectly clear and very blunt. I'm not presenting you with an opportunity to double your money like the S&P 500 in a few years. I'm presenting you with an opportunity to potentially 5x or 20x your money. Because if their business plan pans out, it could deliver 500% to 2,000% returns in 12 to 24 months based on peer comparisons. Again, the company is actively working on defining the resource, which means that the biggest single catalyst for shareholder value creation is imminent, and then converting that resource to a deposit and then to exit, sell the company, a massive premium. Right now, their stock is trading at just 39 cents US right now. It's up 35% so far this year. It's, it's really cheap just to buy a few shares. Again, I'm bringing this to you so you can go in, out there and do your own due diligence on it before they announce drilling results. I'm gonna have links to Alaska's website and their latest drilling projects in the description so you can dive in more deeply into this. If you wanna make some money investing in American companies, 
This is the company to check out, and we'll see you next time.